हेलो स्टूडेंट गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर अजय कुमार सिन्हा प्रोफेसर ऑफ केमिस्ट्री टुडे आई विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम द लास्ट क्लास लास्ट क्लास आई डिस्कस्ड प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ कोलाडल सॉल्यूशन इन दैट आई हैव डिस्कस्ड कॉलिगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज टिंडल इफेक्ट कलर ब्रॉनियर मूवमेंट एंड चार्ज ऑन कोलाइडल पार्टिकल्स नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ चार्ज ऑन कोलाइडल पार्टिकल्स इज कन्फर्म बाई इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस एक्सपेरिमेंट वेन इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल इज अप्लाइड अक्रॉस टू प्लेटनम इलेक्ट्रोड्स डिपिंग इन ए कोलाइडल सोल्यूशन चार्ज द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ चार्ज ऑन कोलाइडल पार्टिकल्स इज कन्फर्म बाई इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस एक्सपेरिमेंट वेन इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल इज अप्लाइड अक्रॉस टू प्लेटनम इलेक्ट्रोड्स डिपिंग इन ए कोलाइडल सोल्यूशन द कोलाइडल पार्टिकल्स आफ्टर अप्लाइंग पोटेंशियल आफ्टर अप्लाइंग पोटेंशियल अक्रॉस टू प्लेटनम इलेक्ट्रोड्स डिपिंग इन ए सोल्यूशन डिपिंग इन ए कोलाइडल सोल्यूशन द कोलाइडल पार्टिकल्स मूव टुवर्ड्स वन और द अदर इलेक्ट्रोड द मूवमेंट ऑफ कोलाइडल पार्टिकल्स अंडर एन अप्लाइड इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल इज कॉल्ड इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस अगेन यू लिसन केयरफुल्ली द मूवमेंट ऑफ कोलाइडल पार्टिकल्स अंडर एन अप्लाइड इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल is called electrophoresis positively charged particles move towards cathode positively charged particles move towards cathode while negatively charged particles move towards anode you know anode is anode is positively charged and cathode is negatively charged then movement of uh, particles means uh, positive particles will move towards negative and negative charged particles will move towards positive electrode two types of electrodes here platinum electrodes are used then one function as anode other function as a cathode then here Uh, cathode is negatively charged anode is positively charged hence colloidal particles if it is a positive charge then it will move towards negative electrode and if it is a uh, positive charge a negative charge then it will move towards positive electrode okay this process is known as electrophoresis electrophoresis okay particles move towards the anode i told you that uh, if if it is a uh, anode you know positively charged hence negatively charged particles will move towards anode and uh, reverse way that uh, cathode is negatively charged hence positively charged will move towards anode okay just simple way negative will move towards positive and positive will move towards negative electrodes this uh, by uh, diagram you can understand it very clearly when electrophoresis when uh, electrophoresis that is the movement of particles prevented 
by some suitable means prevented by some suitable means it is observed that the dis dispersion medium begins to move in an electric field thus thus you can say uh, this is called electroosmosis again you listen when electrophoresis when electrophoresis that is the movement of particles is prevented by some suitable means it is observed that the dispersion medium begins to move in an electric field this phenomena is termed as electro osmosis this i have told about the uh, electrophoresis now next property is a uh, coagulation coagulation or precipitation the stability of the lyophobic salts lyophobic header water header or solvent header the stability of the lyophobic salt is due to the presence of charge on colloidal particles if if somehow the charge is uh, removed the particles will come nearer to each other to form aggregates or coagulation and settle down under the form of under under the force of gravity the process of setting up colloidal particles is called coagulation or precipitation again you listen carefully what is the you can say coagulation or precipitation the stability of the lyophobic salt is due to the presence of charge on colloidal particles if somehow the charge is removed the particles will come nearer to each other to form aggregates for for uh, coagulation okay to form aggregate or you can say uh, aggregate or coagulate you can tell coagulate they will come close to form aggregates or coagulate and settle down under the force of gravity the process of setting up colloidal particles is called coagulation or precipitation of the salt okay the coagulation of the lyophobic salts lyophobic header header of solvent the coagulation of lyophobic salts can be carried out this can be carried out carried out by many ways this uh, coagulation how coagulation will take place then coagulation of lyophobic salts can be carried out by many ways first i am talking about there are five ways then i will tell all ways first first i am talking about how coagulation of lyophobic salts takes place first method first ways i am talking about by electrophoresis by electrophoresis what will happen here the colloidal particles move towards oppositely charged electrodes get discharged and precipitated what i told electrophoresis that same same things the colloidal particles in in electrophoresis you know the colloidal particles move towards oppositely charged electrodes get discharged and precipitated then this is the first method 
सेकेंड बाई मिक्सिंग बाई मिक्सिंग टू अपोजिटली चार्ज सॉल्स के इफ यू विल मिक्स टू अपोजिट अपोजिटली चार्ज सॉल्स देन कोगुलेशन टेक्स प्लेस के अपोजिटली चार्ज सॉल्स वेन मिक्सड इन एलमोस्ट इक्वल प्रोपोर्सन neutralize their charges and get partially or completely precipitated mixing of hydrated ferric oxide example i am talking about mixing of hydrated ferric oxide which is a positively positively sol and ars arsenious sulfide which is negatively negatively charged if both is mixed bring them after mixing this to up uh, this to uh, can say solution to solves ferric oxide which is positive arsenic sulfide which is negative bring them in the precipitated forms this type of coagulation is called mutual coagulation okay this is called mutual coagulation now third method that is a by boiling simply by boiling when a sol is when a sol is boiled the adsorbed layer is disturbed due to due to increased collisions with the molecules of dispersed medium this reduces the charge on the particles and ultimately lead to setting down the setting down in the form of precipitate okay means why simply it can be coagulated now next method i am telling you that is a by dialysis by persistent dialysis on prolonged dialysis traces of the electrolytes present in the sol are removed almost completely and the colloids become unstable and ultimately coagulate now next method last method that is the by addition of electrolytes when excess of an electrolyte is added excess when excess of an electrolyte is added the colloidal particles are precipitated the reason is that colloids interact with ions carrying charge opposite to that present on themselves this causes neutralization leading to their coagulation the two is uh, the ion you can tell the ion uh, responsible for for uh, neutralization of charges on the particle is called coagulating ion again you listen the ion responsible for uh, neutral neutralization of charge on the particles is called the coagulating ion a negative ion causes the precipitation of positively charged positively charged sol and vice versa okay then this i told you five methods of uh, coagulation first method by electrolysis second by mixing two oppositely charged salts third by boiling fourth by persistent dialysis and fifth by addition of electrolytes here this dialysis by persistent dialysis uh, again you listen carefully here you have to understand on prolonged dialysis traces of electrolyte 
present in the soul are removed traces very less traces of the electrolytes present in the soul are removed almost completely and when there will be no salt present then it will coagulate okay electrolyte present in the soil are removed almost completely and the colloidal becomes unstable and ultimately coagulate then uh, i have told all five methods okay now further i want to tell you that uh, uh, it has been uh, it has been observed that generally greater the valence of the flocu floculating iron added means what iron you are adding that i am talking about that is all, that is called floculating iron then this has been observed that generally greater the valence of the floculating iron added the greater is its power to power to cause precipitation this is known as hardy sulz rule this is very very important hardy sulz rule spelling h a r d y hardy dash two scientists are there hardy and sulz second scientist is s c h u l z d sulz sulz that's why it is called hardy sulz rule sulz rule hardy sulz rule what is this rule then uh, this is uh, this rule i am talking about greater the valency or greater the valence or valency of the floculating iron added the greater is the power to cause precipitation this is uh, known as hardy sulz rule now example i am telling you in the coagulation of a negative sol the floculating power is in the order of uh, aluminum suppose it is there aluminum barium sodium then aluminum 3 plus is greater than barium 2 plus and barium 2 plus is greater than sodium 2 plus because aluminum has three valency 3 plus barium has two valency 2 plus sodium has one valency hence floculating power is in the order of is in the order aluminum 3 plus is greater than barium 2 plus barium 2 plus is greater than sodium 1 plus because first one is plus 3 charge valency is plus 3 second one means barium 2 plus and sodium only 1 plus okay similarly in the coagulation of a positive sol the floculating ions is in the order how i am telling you example is of a uh, you can say this uh, cyanide fe- mm, ferrous cyanide okay cyanide complex actually it is a uh, ferrous hexa cyanide ferrous hexa cyanide which is four minus if we see an whole six this is a complex ion having four negative after that phosphate is there three negative sulfate is two negative chloride is one negative then more the charge more the more the you can say uh, distance uh, floculating power Floco- floculating power increases with charge then if e cn whole 6 it has four negative okay hence uh, it will floculate it will precipitate more it has more capacity to precipitate then phosphate because it has three power three minus po4 three minus after that sulfate so4 two minus and last is cl minus chloride ion okay 
then in the coagulation of positive salt the flocculating power is in the order fcn whole 6 4 minus is greater than po4 3 minus and this is greater than so4 2 2 minus and this is greater than cl1 minus okay this question is asked both example what i told you to for uh, this things to coagulate negative negative ion positive ions are required which uh, i can say valency is more that will precipitate more okay quickly it will flocculate flocculating power will increase okay means aluminum 3 plus it has more flocculating flocculating power than barium 2 plus and barium 2 plus is has more power than sodium 1 plus the minimum concentration of an electrolyte in millimoles in milli millimoles per liter required to cause a precipitation of a sol in 2 hours is called coagulating value question is asked again you listen the minimum concentration of an electrolyte in millimoles per liter in millimoles per liter required to cause precipitation of sol in 2 hours is called coagulating value the smaller the quantity needed the higher higher will be the coagulating power of an ion okay the smaller the quantity needed the higher will be the coagulating power of the ion okay this important point i have told you now coagula coagulation of uh, lyophilic salts lyophilic loving what i discussed that was for phobic all five methods what i discussed for coagulation that for that was for phobic lyophobic now i am going to discuss coagulation of lyophilic salts philic means uh, um, solvent loving okay there are two factors which are responsible for stability of lyophilic salts these factors are first factor charge and uh, second factor is solvation of the colloidal particles two factors i told you first factor charge and sector uh, second factor solvation of the colloidal particles when these two factors are removed a lyophilic sol can be coagulated means charge if you remove the charge then it will coagulate or sol is uh, this uh, water molecules solvation means uh, what water ions will be you can say surrounded by water molecules then charge and water molecules if we will remove both then coagulation will take place okay means a uh, lyophilic salt can be coagulated this is done how will do then first this is done by adding an electrolyte and second by adding a suitable solvent when solvents such as alcohol and acetone are added to to hydrophilic salts hydrophilic means water loving the dehydration of this dispersed phase occurs correct when solvents such as alcohol and acetones are added to hydrophilic salts means in hydrophilic salts if you will add solvents like alcohol and acetone then what will happen dehydration of 
dispersed phase occurs dehydration under this under this condition a small quantity of electrolyte can bring about coagulation means after mixing uh, this alcohol or acetone in hydrophilic salt that time dehydration dehydration of dispersed phase occurs and under this condition and under this condition a small quantity of electrolyte electrolyte can bring about coagulation means little amount of electrolyte any electrolyte you have to add then coagulation will take place means it will precipitate now i am going to discuss protection of colloids protection of colloids how will you protect okay it should not precipitate it should not coagulate then what will you do how will you protect then i am telling you lyophilic salts are more stable than hydrophilic salts this question is asked this question is asked remember it lyophilic salts philic loving water loving or uh, solvent loving lyophilic salts are more stable than lyophobic salts this is due to the again reasoning i am telling reason this is due to the fact that lyophilic colloids are extensively solvated extensively solvated solvated with water molecules that is the colloidal particles are covered by a sheath of liquid in which they are dispersed sheath of liquids everywhere a liquid will be there okay surrounding the colloidal particles or water molecules will be there okay this is called solvation this is called solvation around the particles water molecules will be there or any or any can say solvent molecules will be there then due to that this is lyophilic salts are more stable than lyophobic lyophobic salts okay now lyophilic colloids have a unique property of of protecting lyophobic colloids again it is important point lyophilic colloids have a property unique property of protecting lyophobic colloids means lyophilic colloids protect lyophobic colloids how when a lyophilic salt is added to lyophobic lyophobic salt the lyophilic particles form a layer around lyophobic lyophobic particles and thus protect the latter means it protects lyophobic particles from electrolytes lyophilic colloids used for this purpose are called protective colloids this is called protective colloids okay if uh, electrolyte uh, this uh, um, with men lyophilic colloids uh, is mixed when a lyophilic salt is added to lyophobic salts then lyophilic particles form a layer around lyopho- lyophobic particles and thus protect the latter from electrolytes okay it uh, protects lyophilic protects because they will form a layer they form a layer around lyophobic particles and thus protect the lyophobic from electrolytes lyophilic colloids used for this purpose are called protective colloids 
now uh, this uh, i am talking about emulsion i am talking about emulsion this is also very very important question always it is asked what is the emulsion now understand try to understand these are liquid liquid colloidal system okay first important point emulsion what are the emulsions then emulsions are liquid liquid colloidal system that is the dispersion of finely divided droplet in another liquid 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 colloidal system means the dispersion of finely divided droplets droplets in another liquid if a mixture of two immiscible immiscible not miscible immiscible or partially miscible liquids is second a coarse a coarse dispersion coarse c o a r s e coarse dispersion of one liquid in the other is obtained which is called emulsion correct if a mixture of two immiscible or partially partially miscible liquids is shaken a coarse dispersion of one liquid in other is obtained which is called emulsion okay generally one of the two liquids generally one of the two liquids is water one will be certainly water there are two types of emulsion first while dispersion while dispersed in water while dispersed in water in short cut it is called o w type o oblique w o means while while is dis, uh, dispersed in water o oblique w type and second is reverse water dispersed in oil w oblique o type water dispersed in oil okay both are reverse then two types are there o w and w o type in the first system means o w o oblique w o w type in the first system means o w type water acts as a dispersion medium water acts as dispersion medium example of this type of emulsions are milk and vanishing cream in milk liquid fat is dispersed dis, uh, dispersed in water in milk liquid fat is dispersed in water means water is more and fat is less liquid fat is dis dispersed in water in milk okay this is the first example of first type o w o oblique o w water is more always always uh, this uh, medium will be more then first example i told you milk in the second system i am talking first system example i told you milk okay liquid fat is dis, uh, dispersed in water in second system now reverse w oblique o means water is water is dispersed in oil means oil is more water is less okay then here what is the example second system oil acts as a dispersion medium then common example of this type are butter and cream butter and cream here oil will be more water will be less okay emulsion of oil in water oil in water are unstable and sometimes they separate into two layers on on a standing see in second type i am talking about emulsion of oil in water are unstable 
and sometimes they separate into two layers on standing. For stabilization of an emulsion, a third component called emulsifying agent is usually added. The emulsifying agent forms an interfacial film between suspended particles and the medium. The principal emulsifying agents for OW while in water emulsions are protein, gums, natural and synthetic soap. These are emulsifying agents. Examples of emulsifying agents for while in water emulsion. Okay, question is asked. Then first example of emulsifying agent for while in water. That is the protein. Second is gum. Third is natural. And this third is natural, natural soap. And fourth is synthetic soap. Okay. And for water in oil, water in oil, that is the first, its uh, emulsifying agents uh, are uh, heavy metal, heavy metal salts particularly, heavy metal salts of fatty acid, heavy metal salts of fatty acid, heavy metal means here, maybe gold, maybe silver, okay, maybe chromium, cobalt, nickel then uh, metal salts heavy metal salt of fatty acid means a uh, long chain long chain of hydrocarbon long chain alcohol also long chain alcohol lamp black etc these are the examples of emulsifying agent for oxygen uh, for uh, while in water while in water okay i have told about that question is asked emulsions can be diluted with any amount of the dispersion medium means it can be diluted with any amount of any, any amount of the dispersion medium because medium medium only uh, to to dilute the solution medium is required then any amount can be any amount of medium can be added okay on the other hand the dispersed liquid dispersed liquid when mixed when a dispersed liquid when mixed forms a separate layer okay the droplets in emulsions are often negatively charged Always remember the droplets in emulsion are often negatively charged and can be precipitated by electrolytes. Correct? If you want precipitation, then you have to add electrolytes, a small quantity of electrolytes. They are this I am talking about the this emulsion. They also show Brownian movement means uh, emulsion show Brownian movement, Tyndall effect, okay, like because this also a uh, colloidal solution only. Then uh, here also uh, move, uh, this Brownian movement will be there, Tyndall effect will be there. Emulsion can be broken into constituent liquids by heating or by freezing or by centrifuging okay this can be broken into constituent liquids first by heating second by freezing third by centrifuging okay this i have discussed about the emulsion okay now I am stopping only here uh, because uh, other things uh, it will take more time. Tomorrow I think this next class this chapter will be finished. Okay. Then next class I will discuss uh, that is the 
कोलाइडल कोलाइडल सॉल्यूशन अराउंड अस के कोलाइड्स अराउंड अस आई विल डिस्कस इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू